right. Thank you guys so much for being here. My name is Rita Fleming. I'm a regenerative health specialist, and I have been teaching and practicing yoga, um, specifically alignment, my entire life. So I'm really excited to share this class with you. And yeah, let's dive in. We have some requests on working with immune system, nervous system health, and really supporting the hips and the groin. So we'll work on that and then any requests that come up along the way as well. So let's just go ahead and dive in. Um, it's really important to have a non-sticky surface or I mean a non-slippery surface. So something that allows you to have grip. Um, and this is just for your own protection so that you're not slipping, but also to really activate our muscles in a different way. Can you see me all right? Okay, cool, thanks. <laughs> so I just wanna start with getting the feet wide. And if you were to, you know, drop from your wrists down to your ankles, I want it to be like a straight plumb line. Awesome, so a little bit wider, Rachel. Perfect, as long as that feels good to you. And then we're gonna kick our heels out and turn our toes in. And this is just for the purpose to start getting this internal rotation in our groins. And so you're gonna imagine that from the inside edges of your groins, it's spreading, reaching outwards towards the side walls. And hopefully you start to feel some hip activation and strengthening happening. Good. So we have this internal rotation of the groins and then you're dropping your glute muscles down towards the ground. And then we're lifting these kneecaps. They're not hyperextending, but they're lifting, engaging upwards towards the ceiling, towards the hips. We have a nice lift in the arches of our feet. Maybe you're starting to feel this and the hips in different places in the body. Go ahead and see if you can take the tailbone and extend it down towards the floor as if there was a heavy anchor, as if you could straighten it and start to feel that space that happens in your lower back. And then really press the outside edges of your feet down into the ground and imagine that you're spreading the floorboards wide. And you'll start to feel that toning and deeper into your hips. Good. So glutes are reaching towards the floor. Kneecaps are engaging, lifting up towards your pelvis. Outside edges of your feet are pressing. Inner arches are lifting. Hopefully you feel some toning in your feet and your ankles. Really strengthening to the ankles and the feet and the arches. And then extend through the top of your head so you're getting nice and tall and long, making space in your vertebra, spreading the collarbones wide. And take that lift from the bottom of your armpit chest up towards the ceiling. And so the tops of your trapezius, the tops of your shoulders are rolling down your back body. And then the front chest, armpit chest is lifting upwards. So top shoulders reaching down, underneath your armpits lifting up. So two opposing actions. And we have that equal pressure in our feet, smooth breathing in your nose. I welcome. Good, so what we're doing is we're toning the hips we're actually balancing and leveling out the pelvis and strengthening those muscles along the sacrum, which is so important to hold the sacrum in place. And go ahead and draw. Your sacrum is that triangular bone um, right at the base of the spine. So you can draw that towards the space in front of you. Draw that to the wall in front of you. You'll feel that deeper activation in your pelvis and your hips. 
and the alignment of your ankles and your knees. Front thighs are reaching to the wall behind you. Sacrum is reaching to the wall in front of you. It's great for setting those knees, getting them in place, supporting the joints, making space in the knee joints. Good. And then exhale, just slowly walk your feet together. <laughs> Did you feel that activation? Yeah, good. Okay, great. So now we're just gonna be um, mountain pose, big toes together, inner heels touching. And see if you can spread all 10 toes wide. We're working with the toes because it really activates your nervous system. And you know, if you have one toe or something that's not working with you, just keep building it. You'll build those neural pathways from your brain to your feet. So all 10 toes, we're gonna spread those wide. Kneecaps again are lifting, engaging upwards towards your head. There's no hyperextension in the knees, but the legs are strong and active. See if you can stack your weight right above your heels and then your knees right above your heels, your hips above your knees. And see if you can get taller. Palms can be externally rotating or facing outwards. And then we're getting an external rotation in our upper arms. So take those thumbs and reach them back behind you. Yep, we're just gonna get that rotation in your arms, impacting your shoulders and your spine. Keep lengthening out the top of the head. Face is parallel to the wall in front of you. The chin isn't up or down. And then our sternum, right in the center of your chest. See if you can get a lift upwards and forwards at a 60 degree angle. Lifting up, reaching forward. Try and get that balanced weight in your feet. Smooth rhythmic breathing in your breath. And so you'll notice that we're holding these postures and really just trying to strengthen the nervous system, work with the posing actions. So even though you're just standing here, you're working on so many points, your body's engaged. Your triceps, the backs of your arms are engaging towards your bones. Extend through all 10 fingertips, all 10 toe tips. Put your weight on your heels. Keep lifting that heart. Spreading those collarbones wide. We're toning into the spine. And again, see if you can draw that sacrum towards the wall in front of you and the thighs towards the space behind you. Smooth breathing. And exhale, you can come on out. This next one's a bit of a balancing pose. So of course you're welcome to use the wall on um, whatever is most supportive of you. We're gonna stand on that right leg and bring that left leg up. Again, feel free to hold onto a wall, whatever is supportive. Good. And so your left knee is angled just slightly out in front. It's not directly out to the side, slightly out in front. That right standing leg is strong. You're toning and engaging the thigh, the knee, acting as though you're growing roots through that standing leg, as if you're reaching through the floor. It's amazing for the spine and the nervous system working in this toning way. Great for the ankles. Keep drawing your glute muscles down towards the floor. Heart lifting upwards and forwards, spreading those collarbones wide. 
And keep that standing leg strong and engaged, kneecap engaged. We're just gonna breathe deep, work on this toning and strengthening. Building those arches in your feet. Take your palms in front of you. Pretend like there's two little weights on your elbows, drawing your elbows down towards the floor. And your heart is lifting upwards and forwards. Soft in the face, soft in the throat, releasing any grip or tension. Get strong and sturdy through your core and through your leg. Get a little bit taller. If you make more space in your spine, tailbone reaching towards the earth, head extending upwards towards the ceiling, growing and making space. Good, and then exhale, come on out. Let's go ahead and switch. Opposite leg, so your left leg is your standing leg, right leg up. Again, using whatever support you need for balance. That knee is stripped slightly in front of the body. Hold your hands on the hips since that's how we started with the last one. Draw your glute muscles down towards your heels, towards the floor. Draw the front of the thigh of your standing leg to the wall behind you. Again, if you hyperextend your knees, slightly bend your knees. Lifting and engaging that kneecap up towards the ceiling. And then the sternum, the heart is lifting upwards and forwards. And then the very base of your scapulas, the triangular bones behind your shoulders, behind your back, are reaching to the space in front of you. Those little tiny wings, it looks like the tip of Hawaii. Draw those towards the wall in front of you. It's gonna open the heart and tone the spine. Lengthen, make space in the back of the neck. Yeah, good work. Exhale, bring those palms together. Pretend like there's little weights on your elbows that are drawing down towards the floor. Smooth breathing. Navel is engaged towards your core. Maybe you're feeling some burning or sensation in your feet or ankles, just toning and strengthening. Pressing that right foot into your left thigh, engaging the hips. Good, and exhale, come on out. I love that balancing posture. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna grab a chair. And if you don't have a chair, you can do this with your hand at a wall, like such. Um, but if you have a chair, then grab that. And we're just going to place the hands down. You want to make sure your chair is sturdy. And so you're stacking your elbows above your wrists. Your palms are just on the outside edges of the chair. So as we wait for everyone to get ready and situated, just see if you can get at a 90 degree angle, lengthening through the top of the head, making space in the spine. Good, beautiful. And so equal pressure in the hands. So pressure of the hands is going to impact the neck, the shoulders, the hips. So get that equal pressure 
and reach and extend as though you're, you're pressing through the chair. Lengthen the back of the neck, soften the face. And we're getting an external rotation of your upper arms, those triceps, or the front of the arms, the biceps are rolling away from the face. Good. So go ahead and work on getting your feet a little bit wider than hips width apart. And reach through your sits bones so that we can activate the spine. Sits bones are reaching back behind you and upwards towards the ceiling. Really connect into this point. It's an amazing point for your spine. So again, we're not hyperextending, but those kneecaps are engaging, lifting upwards towards the ceiling. Equal pressure in your feet, which is going to impact the balance of your spine. Arches are not collapsed. You're lifting your inner arches. And even here, we're getting lots of toning. And then just keep working from your sits bones. That's the intelligence points we're working from. So the two bones that you sit on, they're reaching upwards towards the ceiling. And then you're getting an internal rotation of the upper thigh. Heart open, legs engaged, faces parallel to the floor. And then we're gonna exhale and bring your left leg up and the air back behind you. And we don't want the pelvis to tilt or water to spill off the pelvis. So even if you have to bend your standing leg, pretend that there's a level on your lower back, on your pelvis, and you're keeping that pelvis level. Your standing leg is getting an internal rotation. And your leg that's up in the air is really getting an internal rotation. And your standing leg can be bent if it keeps your pelvis level. Extend through the top of the head. Exhale, bring that leg down. Inhale, right leg up. Again, just working to create a balanced level pelvis, bending the standing leg if you need to. Equal pressure in the arms. internal rotation of the leg that's in the air. Keep extending, keep lengthening, growing that leg to grow the spine. And then exhale, come down. It can be centered underneath you, feet together. Exhale, take that left leg up in the air. First leg. Keeping the pelvis level, really extend that left leg long. Extending through the mount of the big toe and out the top of the head. Exhale down. Inhale that right leg up. Pelvis level. Lengthening through the spine. Smooth, gentle, rhythmic breathing through your nose. So our breath does control our nervous system. Exhale. You can impact your emotions through your breath. So smooth, soft breathing. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring that left elbow down onto the chair. Palm facing down, grabbing the outside edge. You're gonna bring that left leg, get the external rotation. And it's gonna look like this. So good, awesome, half moon. So your standing leg is getting an 
external rotation. Hip chasing towards the buttocks. Your leg that's in the air is getting an internal rotation. Hip chasing towards the groin. Bring the leg that's up in the air up higher. Good. Smooth breathing. Amazing for the nervous system and spine. Amazing for the lower back. The smooth breathing. And exhale, come on down. We're gonna do the opposite side. So your right hand is gonna go down, right elbow down. Right foot is your standing leg. Bring your leg that's up in the air up higher. Your leg in the air is getting an internal rotation, hip reaching towards the groin. Standing leg is getting an external rotation. Bring your leg that's in the air up higher. Smooth breathing. Take those traps and reach them down towards your shoulders. And exhale, come down. Pause here for a minute with those feet together. Starting from that first position, just equal pressure in your wrists. You're lifting those two sit bones up towards the ceiling. You get a rotation in your pelvis. And then we're getting that external rotation of our upper arms. Biceps, the front of the arms are moving away from the face. Lengthen the back of the neck. And then exhale, come down to your first leg. We're gonna do a repeat of the same posture. So standing leg is slightly externally rotated. Good. Toes slightly kicked out on the standing leg. Elbow aligned with the shoulder. And bring the leg that's in the air slightly up. Belly button is twisting up towards the ceiling. Lengthen the back of the neck. And then exhale, come on down. Good. Opposite side, elbow and wrist. Inhale, left leg up. Reach the leg up in the air up higher. You're getting an external rotation of that standing leg. Buttocks are swooping towards the heels. Draw the buttocks towards the heels. Keep going with that action. And exhale, come on down. Beautiful. Good work. Okay. So you can either use the chair again or or blocks, whatever you have, whatever you're most comfortable with. And we're gonna work in the pelvis some more. Good. So kicking those heels out. Good. And we're gonna grab those blocks. Get a nice wide stance, heels kicked out. We want to align those wrists right under the shoulders. And see if you can get that pressure in the outside edges of your feet, lifting those inner arches. 
engaging and lifting the kneecaps. Great for opening up the knee joint. And again, you're gonna take your sits bones and lift them up towards the ceiling. Amazing for toning the spine. And those southern tips of your scapulas are reaching towards the floor. So your two sits bones lifting up towards the ceiling, pressing in the outside edges of your feet, act like you're spreading the floor wide. External rotation of your upper arms. And the southern tips of your scapulas reaching towards the floor. Face is parallel to the floor. You feel that toning all through your spine. Smooth breathing. Draw the front of the knee to the back of the knee. One of the reasons that we hold these poses longer so that your body can find true balance. Because oftentimes we're used to working the same muscles that it's not until we stay in this for a while that we find new muscles that we don't normally use. So keep pressing in the outside edges of the feet, spreading the floor boards wide. Sits bones are spreading wide and looking up towards the ceiling. Keep going with that action. Good, and then exhale and slowly walk those feet together. Go ahead and take a seat on the floor. Again, more open leg position. Strasana. So um, this one is great for getting circulation into the pelvis, into the organs. But rather than going, you know, rather than rounding the back forward, we want to move from the pelvis. And we want to see if we can get these outside edges of our knees down towards the floor. So yeah, sometimes it's a lot of work for many of us to get those outside edges of our knees down. And then equal posing action, getting the inside groin down. We have outside knees, inside groin, reaching towards the floor. You might feel that difference in your hips and your pelvis and your legs. And we're just working on toning here. So imagine that you're busting through the floor with your thighs, with those outer edges of your knees. Smooth breathing, keeping that spine nice and long and engaged. Keep drawing those outer edges of the knees down. And then find those two sits bones that we were working on, get equal pressure on them. Spreading the sits bones wide. And we want to stay here until we get some new engagement in our legs. We're remolding, re-sculpting our muscle patterns. And exhale, so I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna actually have you grab the inside of your knees and use your hands to bend your legs. Good. And this next one, sorry, make you get up after that. You'll want a bolster or blocks or blankets or any kind of height. Make sure you can see this all right. Okay. So for this, our feet are going to be together. 
Utkanasana. We basically want as much height as we need to get our hips above our knees. So if our knees are up here, our groins are going to be really tight. So we need our hips up higher than our knees or at least at level with them. Sometimes that looks like two bolsters. <laughs> Or a bolster in a block or a bolster in a blanket. And then we're going to open the fronts of our feet like a book. Go ahead and sculpt, open those up. Get that malleability. Good. And those heels are drawn in towards the pelvis. And we're going to tone into the hips. So it's going to start with our groins, releasing towards our inner knees. So draw your sacrum towards the wall in front of you to open up the front of the pelvis. Groins are releasing to the inner knee. Keep reaching that sacrum forward towards your, towards your heels. And then from the outside of your knees, we're going to be reaching up towards the inner hips. So draw those hips deeper into place, into their sockets, or toning, bringing that circulation. Again, this is amazing for toning and developing the pelvis, balancing it. Balancing out the spine, smooth breathing. Smooth, soft inhalation, followed by smooth, soft exhalation. Lengthen out the top of the head. Drawing that sacrum towards the wall in front of you. You want your knees at the same height. So if one is up higher, draw the other knee up to the same level. And keep drawing the outside edges of your knees up towards your hip sockets. Toning in through the hips. Toning through the glutes. Essentially, we want your glute muscles solid. I love this hip work because it gets so deep and it's so strengthening and rebalancing. And exhale, soften. We're going to use our hands again to draw our knees upwards. Keep your legs soft and relaxed. And then we're going to take our feet wide. Stay on your bolster. And some more hip opening. So you want your feet parallel. So you were on a train track. And then just settle into here. You know, how we walk, how our ankles are aligned, how our knees are aligned. It's going to impact how our hips are aligned. So just create the resetting, that alignment, creating that toning, creating that opening. See if you can just find a focal point to stare at on the floor in front of you, Dristy. Create that gaze, the focal point. And just breathe deep into your hips. This is also great for male and female reproductive organs. It's great for our digestive system. Nourishing those kidneys and adrenals.
See if you can focus on making your inhalation equal to your exhalation. Equal pressure in those feet. Keep letting the ankles, the knees, the hips reset. Good. And gently, slowly come on up and out. Use your hands to move your legs. This time we're going to put the bolster to the side and flat on the floor. And for this one, you want to align, you might, if you have a hard surface, you might, might want something on your ankle. You want to align your ankle and your knee. And then grab the opposite leg, bring that opposite ankle on top of the knee. And again, we're going to get on the inside edge of our sits bones. This one can be really intense if you've never done it before or if you haven't done it in a long time. The knee might be up, it's okay. Because one, if you practice it daily, it gets really, you see huge improvement over a short period of time. So press through the mouths of the big toes. Extend the spine nice and tall and long, opening the heart, spreading those collarbones wide. It's also great for Balancing out that sacrum. And again, just find a point or gaze on the floor. Really focusing on your breath here. Smooth, deep inhalation. Pausing at the top of your breath. Smooth exhalation through your nose. Good, and exhale. Use your hands to come out. Keep your legs relaxed. Again, align your ankle and your knee and stack the opposite leg on top, inside edges of your sits bones. Might be different on this side. But lengthen those side waists. Inhale, extend out the top of the head. Engage and lengthen that spine. Really softening the face and the throat. Deep 
deepening your breath. Good, and exhale, come on out. Great, so we're getting more into our restorative work, our nervous system work. So if you have a bolster, grab it, or stack some blankets, or stack a couch cushion, whatever you have. And then you're gonna have that over to your right hip. And then the feet, the bottom foot is pointing away from you. And then the top foot is resting right inside the arch and pointing to the wall behind you. So just essentially putting that top ankle right in the arch of the bottom foot. And then we're gonna exhale. And as we do, we're gonna draw the buttocks down towards the floor. And then exhale, you're gonna find that twist throughout your whole body. Keep drawing the buttocks away from the back of the head. Your neck can be either direction. This is amazing for nervous system health. Probably my favorite pose for supporting the adrenal glands and the kidneys. And the adrenal glands really impact our nervous system. Also amazing for digestion. So you're really taking that belly button and twisting. Relax the body. Really open the back of your lungs. So breathing deeply in through the rib cage and through the back shoulders. Try and find areas of your lungs that you're not used to using and open them up, clear them out, strengthen them. Find that gentle twist happening in your spine. And exhale, come on up. Go ahead and switch your feet to the other side and your bolster to the other side. Top ankle is resting in the arch of the bottom foot. And then exhale and twist and really roll those buttocks away from the head. Getting that nice twist in the spine and the belly. Bringing your head either direction.
And exhale, come on up. Okay, second priority, feel how much the nervous system is relaxed. We're moving into that parasympathetic nervous system. Rest and digest, one of my favorite places to be. <laughs> and then this next one is really great for your immune system and mood and heart opening. So I just have my knees together, my feet wide. You can watch first. And then I'm scooting all the way back until my shoulders are on the ground and my heart is lifted. And then palms can be facing up. And so again, this can be a very active and toning pose, which we're gonna start out with. So start by pressing your wrists into the ground extending all 10 fingers. And then you're actively scooping your buttocks away from your head towards your heels. This is going to activate your core, core muscles, and get equal pressure in your feet, right in your left foot. Keep scooping the buttocks away towards the heels. And then the area of the bolster that's touching the back or behind your heart, you're gonna lift that up and away from the bolster. It'll still be touching, but you're actively lifting away from it. And what that's doing is it's creating toning in the back and opening up the heart, setting the scapulas, and activating the muscles around them. Keep that equal pressure in your feet. Keep extending your buttocks away from you. Tailbone extending long. Heart open, lifting, reaching up towards your chin. So bringing circulation to your thymus gland is a huge important part of your immune function. And then your navel could be gently drawn towards the bolster. And then exhale, we're gonna soften, bring those knees towards each other, just relax in this pose. This is more the restorative version. So you've had a long day, you're exhausted, or you need some emotional support. So this is my go-to pose for emotional support. This is 15 minutes of this pose is worth an hour of sleep. So if you're exhausted, this is also your go-to pose. Now we're gonna work on toning again. So equal pressure in your feet, spread all of your fingertips wide, draw your glute muscles away from your head, heart actively lifting. Lifting the heart. Pretend like you're lifting away from the bolster to activate the shoulders and the spine and the rhomboids. Good. Keep this tone going. And then exhale, soften, relax. Soften your face, soften your throat.
few more deep breaths here. And then exhale, roll on out to the side. Coming up to a seated position, can you gentle and slow? Mm -hmm. Just take a moment, really find those two sits bones again, reach through them as if you're reaching through the ground. Find your spine, activate it, strengthen it, lengthen it. Lift that heart upwards and forwards as if, as if you're still in that same pose we were just in. Feel that toning in your heart, your chest, your shoulders, your spine. Really relax your face and your jaw. Be strong in your spine. And just see if you notice any differences in your nervous system and your body. Keep drawing those glute muscles towards the floor. And that shall be enough for tonight. Thank you so much for practicing. Hope you enjoy. Any questions, just please reach out, connect in. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm going to be doing one more of these for the group session. Love you all.